Hey, Claudius. You killed my father. Big mistake. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. And Hamlet is taking out the trash. Stay thy hand, fair prince. Who said I'm fair? No one's going to tell this sweet prince good night. To be or not to be. Not to be. Foreign films are in the back. No, action! This guy's an action star. Down the center, on the left. No! It is impossible! What's not possible? He's fantastic. This is his best performance ever. It, but that was you! Yes. Where the hell have you been? Sorry, Jack. Furball problem. <coughs> Come on! Woo! Give me over here! Right here, Jack! Come on! Come here! Come on, Jack! Let's go, man! Come here! sequel for you this is Tim here again here's another um, this is Tim here again with another movie review I mean and uh, today's movie is last action hero I just wanted to review this because personally it's always been a favorite Arnold flick of mine it's highly underrated if you know anything about the history of this film it bombed massively when it came out because it was up against Jurassic Park and it was a huge budgeted flick we didn't even did like um, some kind of advertisement for the movie from space or a rocket or something. But anyway, it bombed huge. Schwarzenegger's first like bomb was this film. Uh, this was his follow up from the Terminator 2, so this flick had a lot of hype behind it. It came out one week after Jurassic Park and it was just crushed by Jurassic Park. Um, and this film got terrible reviews. I believe even Bill Clinton at the time came out and said, What's so bad about it? I like it. I gotta agree with Bill. This is not a bad movie. I have no idea why this film got so much hate. It is not that damn bad. Um, all in all, this flick, I'm just going to go ahead and say it from one to four stars. I'd give it four out of four. This is a great movie. It's, it's not like a masterpiece. It's not one of the best films ever made, but it doesn't have to be. It's a great film. It's highly entertaining. It's funny as shit. Pretty much, uh, the story of the flick, you got this lonely kid who ends up getting this magic ticket. And yes, it takes a little while for him to get the magic ticket. And the movie does drag a little. It is a little bit too long. Uh, but once he gets it, he goes inside this movie called Jack Slater. It's Jack Slater 4, actually. It's a sequel. And Arnold is like his favorite movie star. And he goes inside the Jack Slater movie, which is his favorite character that Arnold plays. And uh, he's always gravitated more towards movies this kid has than real life. So he goes in there, he gets to meet Jack Slater. And he's always, you know, one of those kids, one of those people who always thought, you meant everything looks so much better from the movie world perspective. You know? Like everything looks so much better to us from the movie world perspective then we never stop to think about what it's like for those characters. Like people who like the Lethal Weapon movies like me. You know, you think Mel Gibson's so badass in this flick. You know, he's so awesome. But you never stop to think, you know, what's it like for Mel Gibson's character from his point of view in, in, in this universe? You know, it would suck because, you know, his wife gets killed like every movie and his dog dies every movie and he gets treated like shit. Uh, it's, his life is horrible for the most part. So, you know, from their point of view, it's terrible. Um, and uh, in Jack Slater 3, Arnold's son got killed by this guy named The Ripper, played by Tom Noonan, who did a, who does a great job in the film. Um, yeah, and Charles Dance plays the villain. Uh, Benedict, uh, he is great. This is one of his best performances. If you don't know who Charles Dance is, have you seen Alien 3? He's the dude that Ripley sleeps with for the first half of the movie or whatever on the prison planet. He's great, great actor. He's great here. Plays the villain. He has like one glass eye. That's really cool. Um, once they get into the movie world, Every uh, everything is like a comedic, more comedic and more flashy because it's the movie action world. And uh, in the movie world, there's some jokes about how this, you know, in jokes about how this is the fourth Jack Slater film. 
and you get like jokes about how over the top action movies get by the time you get to there. And Jack Slater has this uh, boss, I don't know the actor's name, but he was also in Batteries Not Included and a couple other movies. But he plays Jack Slater's boss and he just yells every single thing he says, no matter what it is, because you know he's the comedy relief, like Jack Slater says at the end of the movie. Um, and it's just really hilarious. And at one point in the movie, there's like smoke coming out of his ears because he's so angry. They do take some of the comedy a little bit too far. Like there's a cartoon cat in the movie you're supposed to represent, you know, the comedy of like buddy cop movies. Every now and then they take some of the jokes too far. But I'll admit, I love the fact that the cat was voiced by Danny DeVito. But yeah, um, not all the jokes hit. But for the most part, they're a lot of fun. And they do work. One other thing is this movie is too long. By the time you get to the end of the film, it's like, I believe it's like over two hours. And once you get to the, like, the climax of the film, after they've killed Benedict, the ticket falls in front of this like, theater playing this old classic movie. And Death actually comes out of the screen. And Death is played by friggin' um, Ian McKellen from the X-Men flicks. He does a great job, but the character doesn't really do anything. Like He just shows up. And uh, the boy Danny, played by Austin O'Brien, tells him that, you know, why don't you help us get Jack back to the movies? Because at this point he's been wounded by being shot in the chest by Benedict, who won, who escaped to the real world with the ticket, and Jack and uh, Danny followed him. He wants to use the ticket to basically recruit villains from other movies. Cool idea. Of course, they can't really go through with that because they don't have the license rights to, you know, Freddy Krueger and everything. But um, he does bring back the Ripper again at the end of the movie which was really cool for one final showdown between uh, Jack and the Ripper. Jack gets to get his revenge on him for the bastard killing his son from Jack Slater 3. So that was cool. Uh, but yeah, Death shows up and Danny's like, you know, help me save Jack or whatever. And he, and he doesn't really help, but he just kind of gives him the idea that you should look for the other half of the ticket, which I guess is kind of helping. And he just like walks off. So it's like, why the hell is this character there? I guess the real reason he was probably there is for a sequel set up. They were probably hoping this would start a new franchise and get a sequel. They do leave some loose threads hanging in the film. Like, you know, now that they got the magic ticket and um, Jack Slater survives and he goes back to the movie world, you know, where he's fine. I lo actually love the idea of how he's like basically immortal in the movie world because you know nothing can hurt him because he's you know this badass action star or action character. But in the real world, you know when he punches his fist the window, it does hurt, and that's when that's also when some of the rules get a little bit flimsy because uh, when he comes to the real world, he's bound by natural law. But uh, like when Death shows up, he still gets to keep all his superpowers. So it's like um, it's like the supernatural characters get to keep their superpowers, but the physical characters are bound by the laws of physics of the reality instead of the films. So that's it's a little wishy-washy there, but it, it kind of works because the movie's so much fun. You get to the end of the film, of course Jack Slater survives. He stays in the movie world and he convinces Danny to go back to the real world and be with his mom instead of trying to stay with him or whatever. And he tells him you can always see him because he can always go watch him at the movie, you know. And of course he gets to keep the ticket. So that leaves it, you know, that closes the film as a, a one-off but leaves enough open to where they could do a sequel. They uh, Jack Slater has like flashbacks to his son's death multiple times in this movie. In this movie. Which is a, I do think was a key thing thrown in there to set it up for the sequel to where he probably goes to Jack Slater 3 and saves his son and brings him back. I do feel like that's probably what they were going to do with the sequel. Which I would have been fine with. And it's a shame this movie bombed so bad. Like people, Some people think this movie is like really horrible. Like, I mean, in terms of its comedy and jokes and everything, but it's really not. It's pretty freaking funny. Like, they like the parody jokes of action flicks they have in here, like, all the chicks in Jack Slater's world walk around. They're all super hot models with skin-tight outfits working at the police station. It's, it's fucking funny. I really like the subtle humor like that. When the humor does get too broad and too over the top, like, uh, Benedict has these guard dogs, and he, like, snaps his fingers. And they do, like, a pyramid. That's a little bit... That's too goofy. That's, like, neck and gun stuff. But uh, other than that, the comedy really works. The kid playing, uh, the kid Austin O'Brien who plays Danny, uh, he was good. He's not great. He is a little annoying because he keeps trying to convince Jack Slater that this is this is a movie, that this isn't re reality. And of course, they don't believe him, you know, because from their point of view, this is reality because they're fictional characters uh, in their own universe. But uh, he was a little annoying because why was he so, you know, crazy about trying to convince them this was the movie world. Why not just... I guess he had to convince Jack Slater of that eventually because he would probably need his help to escape back to reality. But, yeah. And another thing, the ticket works on and off. Like they say in the movie, it has a mind of its own. But it also seems like that's just kind of a uh, cop-out 
to have a plot device to where the ticket will help the bad guys and then at the end it magically quits working long enough for Schwarzenegger to, to shoot Benedict in the eye and his glass eye has an explosive in it and it causes his whole friggin body to blow up the top half that was cool and I love Schwarzenegger's uh, one liner when he blows him up he goes uh, no sequel for you <laughs> that was friggin funny yeah, the soundtrack to this is great. We got Megadeth, uh, ACDC, Big Gun, which is an original song written for this movie. I also believe that song was nominated for a Razzie, a Razzie Award for Worst Original Song. That's so stupid. There's movies like every couple of years that just get like picked on because it's just like popular to pick on. Like another one was Batman vs. Superman, where they try to just nominate everything in the, in the movie as like a bad thing, even when it's there's lots of good shit in the film. Um, I always hate that. Um, like Batman vs Superman, I believe Ben Affleck even got a Razzie for like worst performance. I'm like, what? Even if you don't like Batman vs Superman, like you can seriously watch the film and clearly see Ben Affleck is an awesome Batman. I don't know what the Razzies are smoking or Razzies or whatever. But yeah, anyway, uh, all in all, this is a great film. Easily four stars. It does have its problems. Not all the comedy hits. The movie's a little bit too long. Uh, but all in all, this is a great film, and I would have much rather have seen a sequel to this than yet another freaking Terminator film. Like, the Terminator sequels are just endless. They're just endless. Uh, even though I haven't hated the sequels, they're just, they're never gonna stop. Like, if the new ones they hit, we're getting two more. So, I would at least have just have liked to have seen one more Jack Slater film. And it's a shame this film bombed so bad, because this could have been a cool franchise. Uh, this movie is directed by John McTiernan, who also did Die Hard. He does another great job here directing wise. Great film. And there's hilarious comedy moments in the film, like when uh, Schwarzenegger walks into the video store, and uh, <coughs> or Jack Slater does, I mean, and, and uh, the kid tries to prove, him that it's a, prove to him that it's a movie because he tries to show him Terminator 2 that Schwarzenegger starred in, but instead of Schwarzenegger being in the movie, it's Stallone. That was funny as shit. Um, all in all, four stars. Great flick. I highly recommend it. Um, just a very fun movie. Any flaws the film has is just over, overrun by the pure fun of it. I uh, highly recommend it. Now, I'll see you guys again with the next review.